The 9950X is dummy fast in beating Intel. The Ryzen AI chips are dummy fast in beating Apple. And Nvidia is beating AMD at their own game, finally doing what they promised to do. Let's get to the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, July 19th, 2024. And we're gonna start off today by me saying that this is the last time I'm filming hot news. It's to be below a million subscribers. We are at 998,000 plus subscribers as of the time of filming. We are likely to hit a million later today. We're going to be live streaming in celebration here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch and TikTok as well, in case you're interested in following us on any of those platforms. But it has been a wild journey. I'll get a little sappier towards the end of the episode, but let's jump on in to talking about the 9950X. Hi there, Brett from the future found out that the entire video, uh, the audio recording was not working because of changes that happened on the back end that we weren't aware of at the time. So we tried to capture the audio from the camera and scrub it up as best as we could and clean it and deliver it to you in a way that you could appetizingly eat. But obviously this is a big episode for us since it's the last one before a million. So uh, please pardon our dust and gotta start the next generation with some sort of mess, I suppose. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Let's jump on in to talking about the 9950X because more leaked benchmarks are coming out about this thing and it looks to be a great replacement for the 7950X. And if you're worried about an Intel CPU, it looks to be a great replacement for those as well, at least in the tests that are coming out. We've already seen the 9950X tested thoroughly in Blender at various different power profiles. That same benchmarker is now back with Cinebench showing off that the 9950X can beat the 14900KS at 160 watts at the default power profile. When 14900KS is overcooked to 320 watts, the 9950X only needs to go up to 200 watts to beat it. So much more efficient in terms of CPU power, but then it has more scaling room beyond that. You can see that the top score of the 9950X coming out a lot higher than what the 14900KS has currently at the moment, at least when it's water cooled. And then if you go to LN2 up here in the high end power profile, that's something completely different that's amd's own benchmark this one right here is what you can expect as a traditional end user 48,000 points by the r23 whereas the 14900ks only got 42,678 even when it was pushed up to 320 watts now this uncorked power profile that you see up here is expected to consume around 309 watts at least based on the testing so even at the highest end hungriest CPU grubbing we're getting out of this 16 core. It looks like it's still more efficient than the 14900KS beating the 7950X. It looks like it's gonna be a really good upgrade. In fact, the PC that we're building today, we are going to be upgrading it to the 9950X as soon as I can get my hands on it because I can't get my hands on it. So I have to build it with the 7950X 3D right now. And then I gotta return that or get the 9950X when that comes out. That's at least the current plan. But in case you're planning on building a PC with the 9950X or a new GPU, you could look at today's video sponsor. As mentioned, we're about to hit a million subscribers, and if you go back to the early annals of the channel, the first video was with Silverstone. It wasn't sponsored, it was just the PC that I built in my journey to get a mini ITX computer over to South Africa, and that is what I chose, the Silverstone RVZ-01 Raven case all the way back in 2015. But now I'm here to talk about some of their newer products, like the Hella 850R Platinum Power Supply, which you can also pick up in a 750 watt configuration if you want. And both of those power supplies now comply with the brand new ATX 3.1 standard. So they have the latest 12 volt dash two times six PCI Express connector included that future GPUs will support. And as you would expect from enthusiast grade Silverstone power supplies, both are rich in features with 80 plus platinum certification, robust continuous power output rated for 24 seven at 50 degrees Celsius, all Japanese capacitors and fluid dynamic bearing fans with intelligent fan control that features a semi fanless switch. So if you're looking Looking to replace an older CPU with a higher performing, more efficient design, or you want to get ready for the next generation of GPUs potentially coming later this year, you can check out Silverstone's Hello lineup of power supplies at the link in the video description. 850, 750, they're there for you to pick up again down below. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News, being first video, last video before a million. It's good stuff. What a what a complete journey we're on right there. But speaking of later GPUs that are coming out, new reports from EEC filings from Acer is indicating that we're potentially getting more ARC 7000 series GPUs later this year. This is something that is not a new rumor. It's just coming from a different source. We actually got 
Seasonic listing new RX 7000 series GPUs that we had never heard of. And now Acer coming out saying that there's potentially a 7900, 7800, and 7700 non-XT GPUs that could be coming out. And this is on top of the 7990 XTX, 7950 XTX, and 7500 XT that were leaked by Seasonic earlier. This could be an effort for AMD to have some sort of stopgap generation while Nvidia is getting ready with the RTX 50 series. Or it could be, again, that these are never coming out and that this is just names being put on documentation somewhere that was never actually meant to see the light of day. We'll have to see how it develops, but we are still getting details on our DNA 4. AMD's Linux drivers now support them for the next generation, the RX 8000, or potentially it could be called the 7990 XTX. That's the next generation that's our DNA 4. Probably not. They're probably going to call it RX 8000, but it's it's there. Although when I say they probably are going to call it something, I that's just me being hopeful because I've been shown that AMD will name things ridiculously, like the AI 9 HX 370. I cannot remember that no matter how much I try to shove it into my brain that AMD is going this direction. Again, ridiculous name, but not ridiculous in terms of performance. The AI9 HX370, I can't even rattle it off the dome. I just said it. I had to read it. At least in Cinebench testing, showing that it's beating what's currently out there from Intel and the Core Ultra 9, but also the Ryzen 9 HX 3D in terms of single core score, and then also beating the Apple M3 Max, which is currently the flagship CPU that you can find either in Mac Studios or in the MacBooks. It doesn't quite beat it in multi-core score, but that's because the AI9 only has 12 cores, whereas the M3 Max has 16, so it's a little different that way, but uh, it looks like the AI9 chips are... I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of calling it that. I don't want to have to keep calling things AI when I'm not even going to use the AI features. Uh, looks like the 370 is going to be a performance. It's good stuff, but while I wound down from my frustration. We'll have Reese hit you with some deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good week and let's finish it off with some deals. Starting off with this Arzopa 75% wired mechanical gaming keyboard with red switches for only $24.99 with the coupon applied, making it $55 off. But then next we have the Logitech C920 1080p webcam, which is a staple going for only $44.99, making it $50 off. And then lastly, one of our favorite monitor deals from the last couple of days has gotten even better. The Dell G2724D, G2724D, which is a 27 inch 1440p 165 hertz IPS monitor with HDR 400 specifications is going for only $161.99 with the code SAVE10, making it $38 off the total price. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, if you use Xbox Cloud Gaming, you're getting a little deal, which is a twofer. You can get now NVIDIA GeForce Now, at least through the same website. In case you're trying to do a bunch of cloud streaming, they include it on Xbox.com. You can choose between the cloud gaming or the GeForce Now, as you can see right here, something that Xbox is promoting. Play your games the way you want, where you want. It's kind of neat, but at the same time, also one of the things that was required for them to purchase Activision Blizzard, the whole antitrust, anti-competitive thing that Microsoft was getting accused of, had a lot to do with the cloud gaming sector, so them including NVIDIA here is probably just to continue to make that sure that regulators stay off their back and make sure that they uh, don't get come after. They don't get caught after, the people don't come after them. And my mouth's finally caught up to tell you that Dyson has new headphones. You might remember the monstrosities that were the headphones, but also with an air filter that didn't actually operate like a mask. It didn't like seal anything off. That was very, very expensive. But a lot of people are like, the headphones are actually okay. So Dyson is deciding to actually release those headphones but with like new colorways and a new setup and it's still gonna be ridiculously expensive coming in at over $500, but with replaceable outer caps and inner cups and it's gonna cost 50 bucks for each of those caps on the outside, it's gonna be very expensive. But again, one of the things that wasn't panned about these headphones was the quality of the audio. So it's not worth that amount of money, I, I can probably guarantee you, but if you wanted to buy a Dyson pair of headphones, they exist. And now you don't need to get the little face thing. And what also now exists, which many people didn't think would ever happen, is open source GPU kernel modules on Linux from NVIDIA. The open source drivers from Team Green are finally here. NVIDIA said that they were going to do this back in 2022. Nobody really knew how, if, when, and where they would get this done. But now here in 2024, it is finally happening. NVIDIA is saying that we're now at the point where 
transitioning fully to the open source GPU kernel modules is the right move and we're making that change in the upcoming R560 driver release. So this will be mandatory on Grace Hopper as well as Blackwell GPUs, but is not mandatory on everything else. It'll be choose your own adventure for the end user, but there are GPUs that are not going to be supported, such as Maxwell, Pascal, and Volta. There's various different cards in those generations that aren't supported. So this is the first time I want it, I want it to be known that there's a new driver update from NVIDIA where the entire 900 series is basically getting left out in the dust, okay? So just if you're on a 980, 970, 960, 950, 980 Ti, it's probably gonna be coming for Windows sometime soon. Get ready for that. Uh, when it comes to Pascal, it's not all of the 10 series, but the 1080 series is disqualified. And then certain Volta chips also aren't qualifying for this. But this is a big deal in terms of getting NVIDIA parity for certain situations where companies and people have preferred to use AMD just because of better driver support on Linux 14 Red. And this likely will help start swinging the needle in the other direction back towards Team Green. This is coming after NVIDIA actually hired the head of the previous NVIDIA Linux driver project. And now he's manning the team. And it looks like there's been a lot of focus and a lot of effort being put into growing drivers on Linux for NVIDIA. This is a big day. This is a big deal. This is something that NVIDIA said they were going to do. AMD now has to watch out for this. But as we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News, at least there's some hope for AMD running CUDA GPUs, so that could potentially allow them to have more adoption in various different places moving forward. We'll have to see how this all plays out in the future, but let's talk about the past with your comments from yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got the theory guy saying, can't imagine anyone is excited about Copilot. I'm sure there's a guy. There's gotta be a person out there that, that actually is. Then we got a roused lamp saying, Brett and team, I missed the 18 to 20 minute extended videos where you were doing at the beginning of the year. Are Kyler or other UFD team members getting featured soon? Also 1 million ASAP, let's go. Kyler, you wanna get featured? A roused lamp wants you back. No. Oh. I'm back, fellas. Hey. Why are you so short? <laughs> so we're back. Uh, sometimes we have longer episodes. Not all of the time. You had to, didn't you? All right. Well, I brought you out specifically to answer this next comment. You ready for this? The real FBI, I swear, says I'm changing my name to whatever UFD replies. I need your ideas. <laughs> That's going to be really hard to spell. Your name will be whatever UFD replies. Oh, you got played on that. Mm. Enjoy that. Well, we enjoy talking about the fact that we're going to hit a million. We're less than 2,000 subscribers away, Kyler. It just went down. Oh, did it? No, no, <laughs> doing a bit. Oh, okay. I wasn't looking, so you scared me for a second. But uh, yeah, this has been a wild journey. Started the channel back in February of 2015. Now we're here in July of 2024. Many adventures, many ups and dumps and bumps and rumps going on when it came to what UFT Tech has been through to get to a million. I'm uh, ready. Continue, I'll stop. <laughs> And you can even see here, based on the lifetime trajectory, like, uh, things didn't really start taking off until 2017 when I hired Reese and we started working. And then early 2018, I hired Rickus, and that's kind of when things really popped off. We got an editor or we were actually making things on the regular. Uh, that was a very good year for us hitting 100,000 subscribers. And then in 2019 is when we brought Catlin on board. And then in uh, June or in May of, or June of 2019 is when we decided to come back to the States for my son's medical care. Uh, September is when our son almost died in the hospital and we had to make it the emergency move instead of doing it on our timeline. We we're back in the States by November 2019. And then in the beginning of 2020, Reese and Catlin were brought over. I don't know what happened that year, but work visas got banned by the president of the United States. So we kind of had to stagnate there. And it's been just a weird like time trying to figure everything out while also taking care of my son's medical condition we moved to pittsburgh sometime in this time frame right here and then kyler you came on board right here ish at three hundred and ninety five thousand four hundred eighty seven subscribers you've been here over two years what has this journey meant to you well the job i had before this i was working at home i was living in a little apartment um and i was constantly looking for something else to do with my life i was streaming uh, as as just like a pastime, just to do something that was like an escape. I had notes drafted up 
on my phone of like emails that I wanted to send to YouTubers to like try to do something in in this field, if you can call it that. Like I want, this is what I wanted to do more than anyth anything. And whenever I saw the job posting to be here, I was like, wow, that would be the coolest thing ever. And I did not ever imagine that I would actually end up being here uh, at a million subscribers. I mean, you're a half years later. You are an integral reason one of, one of the main re like ways that we've gotten this because like one of the things I lacked before you were here was stability. Like making sure that if I took time off to go take care of my family, stuff was still getting done. And now you're here helping. Obviously we have the team in South Africa, Reese, Rickus, and Catlin. They were a huge part of it. You were the American part of it, trying to stabilize things here, but just we wouldn't be here without the whole team. We also got Michael on board. Big thanks to Michael for uh, making sure that we're getting paid. Also my wife, she's been part of the team for- That was big. Uh, that was that was a big huge. Huge. Yeah, my wife taking over our, our, our business management uh, made things way better and made it so that we could uh, actually focus on the work rather than focusing on survival, which has been great. And we're looking forward to growing more. It's been a journey, that's for sure. It has been an adventure to get here. Uh, we have not had a simple straight up path to to do what many other people have done before us, but we are here in our own way, in our own time, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this job. It has made it so that I could move across the world multiple times with my family and uh, still take care of my son's exorbitant medical needs and expenses, uh, making sure that I can just uh, stop working and go to Philadelphia to go to the hospital with him. Being able to do that with a job and not have to worry about, hey, is my boss going to fire me for taking too much PTO or do I have to exercise the Family Medical Leave Act and uh, not get paid for that time? Like All of that is not a stress. My family is better because of this YouTube channel and I'm grateful for that. And it's brought wonderful people into my life like you and Michael and Reese and Catlin and Rickus and everybody who's uh, crossed paths with the channel, whether that's been at Rage in South Africa, either the one in Joburg or in Cape Town, or the people we've met at Computex, Wootweer and Rory and all of the amazing adventures we've had with uh, fantastic South African companies to the companies that have partnered with us here in the States, Silverstone, was huge for us um, across the journey of the channel. The first company that gave me a computer case so that I could have a PC as soon as I got back to the United States was NZXT. I don't know if you know that, but I didn't. Andy at NZXT, who you look exactly like. That's what I've been told, but I haven't uh, seen him. He made sure I had a PC when I came back to the States. And so like, it's stuff like that. The journey across the, the almost decade I've been doing this has been, um, has been wild. And so I'm grateful. I'm thankful, and this is not the end. Also, not the beginning of anything. It was just kind of a, it's just the number. Let's good place to end it. One is to loan me is down in both and roll with it. Oh, wait, how's it count? Well, two can be as bad as one. I don't actually know that. I don't, I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this. I don't know the words to this song.